mate. Go say hello to mate. Good morning, Clearway. All right, mate, no worries. See you later, mate. Oh, the body's gone. Do you know how long the dead body was on site for? We've got six lines coming in. Right, so when you say there's been a bit of a mess, so it's badly decomposed, there's plenty of body fluids and matter on site, being hair and body particles, yeah? So you're looking to get this cleared and cleaned as soon as. Can I take your name, Flower? Velma. I'll be there tomorrow. So, no problem at all. My name's Matthew Brooks. Matt Brooks runs one of the country's most unusual cleaning firms. Clearway get called in to mop up after violence, suicide and bodies that have been left to rot. They clean up after more dead bodies than any company in Britain. No job is too dirty for Matt's 24-hour call-out service. The business thrives on excrement, human remains, and blood. Is there a stabbing down here this morning? Not this morning, about four days ago. Before, before, yeah, no, we did that one. We got a call from housing this morning saying there's fucking stabbing down here today. It's fucking bad, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Could I have uh, Betty Chief Police Station's number, please? I wonder if you can help me. I've been called out by the Met Police to clean up blood. I've no idea where the blood is. I'm down here now and I can't find the blood. Can you get me in touch with an officer who's on site? You got any calls out? Like Corhaven, Canterbury. Actually, I've just found a load of blood. So, oh yeah. I might have found the blood trail now. Look. We're getting there. We're getting somewhere. Oh, you got blood, 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 blood. It's quite a lot of blood, don't it? And our concern is getting it cleaned up. So what I need to do now is get this cleaned, the middle landing and that one cleaned. You've got to know and love your tools, you know that, don't you? We have had that bucket for years. Haven't we, Chad? Yeah. That's our favourite bucket, do you know that? That comes everywhere with us. That is a Rolls Royce bucket. And it's done good service. Yeah, it's a good bucket. It's lost the wheel, it's getting on now, but we're not going to discard that bucket. That bucket's our friend. It's a job. It's a job that's got to be done. It's a business. I don't ask the staff to do anything I wouldn't do myself. Clearing up blood spills. That's a proper job. Have you finished? Nearly. Do you like this job? Do I like this job? Yeah. I would have to say yes. I like this job. Well, if I was you, I would have to say no. Why is that? Because one, I don't like blood, and two, I just hate cleaning. Yeah, but see, blood, this is easy blood. What I have to do, you know when someone dies in one of these flats? Yeah. Well, not so much the body, but all the fluids. Because when you die, you dissolve. If you were to die now and no one found you for six weeks, you'd go all gooey, you'd go all sticky, all your eyes would pop, all your skin, listen, your skin would swell up and it would burst. And then flies would come along and they'd lay maggots all in your skin, like little no. eggs. No, and then what happens, right? All the maggots start eating you. And they eat the soft tissues first. Listen, the soft tissues, so your eyes, all the inside of your nose, so your face falls in, right? And then when you get it like that and it's real sticky and it's really gooey, they take the body away and we have to come in and clean up. Yeah. Now listen, we're looking for people about your size to help us because we're too tall for some of the big jobs, right? Do you not want a part-time job Saturday morning clearing up the maggots and stuff? No. Right, we're going down now, so just everyone move down, yeah? No, really, if you need help, you need just knock on our door. Yeah, you want some help, Fiona, take that for us. We always around here. Cheers, darling, thanks very much. Deaths are known in the trade as body jobs. Today, Matt and his team are off to deal with the most common body job, an undiscovered death. Uh, we've got a nice body job today. Yeah. When I say nice, we don't know what it's going to be like, but as, as far as we know, body job. I believe it's bad, 
because they have actually evacuated properties left and right of this because right. of the smell. Right. So I actually believe this is quite a strong one. Last year, 12,000 people died alone and undiscovered in their homes. And with more people living alone than ever before, business is good. A lot of our cases come to us is where neighbours have seen colossal amounts of flies at the window. So if you're living in a tower block flat or if you're living in a balcony type flat and you walk past your neighbour's house and there's hundreds and hundreds of flies at the window, then there's a good chance either the cleaning's not quite up to scratch or someone's died. Most of the boys on the firm, they don't even know, need to know the door number in a tower block. They can go into a tower block and they would be able to literally trace the smell to the flat. Most of Matt's work comes from local authorities and housing associations. Can you spread it now? He's been called out by two housing officers in South London. They want him to deal with a flat where a body went undiscovered for over a week. I've got flies. I can actually feel that pulling my buttock muscles tighter. And you really went in the bed? Huh? You really died in the bed? Yeah. That's potent. Now I'm steaming up. It's the uh, kitchen. Yeah, he died in the kitchen. Wash those on your feet, darling, because that's bits of him. Welcome to our world. And it is, uh, it's really strong, it's rich, rich smelling today. You can see his body fluids around the front of the fridge door. It's almost, it's like, it's bubbling. You can see it. We've got insects in the body fluids. That's insects crawling in the, in the fluids. It looks like we're that piece Matt and his team have been called to a flat where a death went unnoticed for over a week. Right, you've got maggot cases there. They've obviously, the maggots have lived on the body. They've now had their fill, they've come off and the flies have long gone. Okay, the flies are what you see flying around the flat. I would say, where would you say he was lying in? Think I would personally say that. His head's got to be this end. I would say the head was this end. Yeah, now one of my boys doesn't yeah. know that smell. It's true, isn't it, John? Yeah, you remember your first dead body, and you will remember this smell forever. Yeah. You're standing there with a camera six foot from the scene. This boy's going to be six inches from it. Yeah. How's your stomach holding out then, Zach? It's okay at the moment. Is it? What would you say your scale of one to ten is for the smell and the heat? Because this is what you've got to realise, it's extremely hot in here. The heat in it, this flat's been sealed up for a long time. The heat it is part of the smell, so it's making it ten times worse. Your breathing is erratic. Why is that? Are you feeling queasy? Or not queasy? I'm just about OK at the moment. You're just about OK. If we took that mask off you and you had to stand in here, do you reckon you could hold it? I'm not sure. Right, you take that thought with you when these boys start clearing this up, scraping what is left, scraping, bagging and cleaning this up. Yeah? All that is contaminated. Bag it and bin yeah, it. Yeah, that's got to He didn't know my name and I didn't know his. No, it's strange, isn't it? I've often thought about it. I thought, you know, we used to... Say hello to each other, but we never knew each other by name sort of thing like, you know. Yeah. Body fluids have soaked up into a wall as far as up to here. Which is uh well about waist height. It's tracking up a bit now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is now. Oh. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's kicking me right between the eyes now. And uh, that was it. It, it, just, it. it was there for 10 days and nobody knew nothing about him, which is a bad thing, wasn't it? It could be anybody laying there for months and months and months, rotting away. But that's it. I don't care. Yes, Eric. I was all right with the smell until we disrupted it. Sort of like, you know. That's skin, isn't it? At the bottom. Yeah, I think so. Oh. <coughs> I 
This ain't no lie, it's a like crispy duck skin. <coughs> Look at that. I think it's disgusting that the man was laying there for 10 days and we all knew he had diabetes. And if Sorry, a man darling. goes missing, well, where is he? What's wrong? Why isn't he about? People should have put themselves out to find out. At this moment of time, this is as good as laying in it. That's how I feel. I do. I've got a squeegee there, haven't I? Oh, look. Yes. That, that is horrible. This is not pleasant. This is not. Yeah. <sighs> In a couple of months' time, when it's all cleaned and they eventually clear the flat, someone will be moving in here and they'll have no idea that someone died on their kitchen floor. Won't have a clue. When they're preparing up their dinner. Yeah. I don't know if he died of an heart attack. It's only what I heard. Maybe I could have caught it in time. Maybe he was trying to get to the door to call for someone to help him. Maybe if I was there that time, Maybe I could have saved him. It's silly, it is silly, but it just, things go through your mind. It's a terrible way to go. You know, the fella has died, you know, from whatever reason, and he's laid there undiscovered. It's a terrible way to be. But unfortunately, it's life, it happens. You know, it happens every day. You know, not just with humans, with everything, you know, with trees, you know, we have the summer, we have the autumn. You know, life and death, is, it's a cycle of life, isn't it? Or as Elton John would put it, it's the circle of life, if you're into the Lion King, you know? If you're a tenant who lives beneath a dripping body and we come in and clean it up within two hours, then you would pretty much say we've provided a social service because that's an evening you don't have to spend with a bucket underneath your light fitting. Uh, but again, it's chargeable. It is chargeable. It's not a charity. It's not a service we provide free of charge. It's not a service that uh, we do for the love of human nature. It is a service we provide for a commercial rate. Good afternoon, I wonder if you could help me. I'm calling from um, a company called Clean Safe Services. Nick was an estate agent, and his friend Steve is a biology graduate. But now they believe their fortune lies in extreme cleaning. With their savings, they've set up CleanSafe, targeting the dirtiest end of the market, and they've already had some success. And in the toilet, where the pointer is now, is about that was about the level that the faeces was. It was filled right over the bowl. So this is the prostitute's flat in North London. Um, I mean, look, the mattress is just black. There's loads of cigarette butts everywhere. There's rotten food. And she was still entertaining clients here. Um, it was still a working brothel. She was a quite, quite heavy smoker. So if you have one every time you have sex, I suppose that would be why. <laughs> and we'd like to get more of this kind of business. Oh, I relish it. Their next challenge is a flat in North London. The tenant's been evicted, having defecated on every carpet, wall, and soft furnishing. Yeah, they've come down, boarded up the windows, um, put a metal gate across the front door and said, you're not coming in, it's dangerous to your health and other people's health. Uh, the thing is, is the only thing you can point from it has been going on a long time. It's not like he's just crapped himself on one night. Oh shit, I've got a problem, let's sort it out. It's been going on for a long time. Well, he's obviously used one side and flipped it over and used the other side. <laughs> Lovely. Look at that. Oh, I guess it's, uh, I guess it's urine, I guess. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I mean, sort of, you know, one angle you could look at it, you could look at this and think, Christ, you know, why is someone cleaning shit? That's just a bad sign when someone's having to clean shit for a living. Whereas, Perversely, from our side of things, cleaning shit means business is going well. There's plenty of dirty work coming in, but for the company to really take off, Steve and Nick need to break into the lucrative business of blood and death. There's more money in the blood work from a pure monetary point of view. I'd rather do that. And the blood, dirt, body, body fur is bold. Crime scene would have to be Crime bold. scene in bold. Of Spot on. Um, um, maybe... Um, experienced uniform staff. This one on the bottom. 
They can charge four times more for blood than faeces and up to 900 pounds for a body job. So Steve and Nick want to fine tune their advertising campaign. Maybe swap one of these two for a picture of the, the crime scene next then. Just because if we've got a picture of an ambulance in there, it might automatically relay. You know, when people think ambulance, they think of blood. In a nutshell, we want to start be building a reputation as uh, a wonderful company who deal with these horrible kind of events and messes. We feel there's lots of profit to be made if we can exploit the market and if people can find us. Matt's off to another body job. But he never meant to get into this line of work. He accidentally discovered a gap in the market when he was doing house clearances in London 10 years ago. Everyone remembers their first body job. Probably a bit like sex, really. Everyone remembers their first occasion. Um, my, my own personal one, my, not sex, this is my own personal first body job was in a wealthy part of London. Speaking to the people within the building, they were coming up to me and they were saying things like, God, I can't believe he died. I truly can't. Uh, he was such a good friend of mine. And I would, you know, I said to the fella, if he was such a good friend, why didn't you notice he died nine weeks ago? Since his first body job, Matt's taken on more than 30 staff. Between them, they now clean up more than 100 undiscovered deaths each year. Yeah, I'll see what's happening here. That's a big old stain, isn't it? That is, isn't it? That is a big yeah. old stain. But apparently, she was a very, very big woman, apparently. Uh, at least 20 stone, apparently. So, yeah, you're going to probably have... There's going to be a lot of bodily fluid. A lot a of lot. bodily fluids under that. If this is the sink, which she just claps here. Where was her head then when she well, went over? Well, the head is right by my foot, actually. Right by this sort of fatty bit here. Then, obviously, you come round to here, and then we come up to a leg, which, obviously, comes round here, and then, obviously, you'll have a foot there, I think, which is, obviously, like, yeah. rather bent over, I think. You know, obviously, whether her body's probably been laying over a bit, or she's fallen awkwardly, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. As I say, just renew everything that's contaminated. But we need to get rid of the smell because the smell's still quite heavy in here. Yeah. And it concerns me, the smell. I don't want to get in and redeck this one. Our main aim is to make sure that uh, people, or the people moving in, are unaware of the property's history. You've got to do it with a, a great level of professionalism, or you've got to do it properly because there's a lot of stake. It's our job to make sure that that property has no evidence of anything like that happening when we're finished. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid she's deceased. What do you want to get home? Uh, I think this must be the third week. This is the right. I suppose you don't know the name, do you? Christine? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Oh, God. Do you know who found her then? Or... Uh, I think a guy across the road. Um, Obviously, I uh, see a load of, uh, like, I don't mean it to be graphic and whatever, but see a load of flies and whatever inside the house, up on the windows. Uh, tried knocking, uh, there weren't no answer or, or anything like that. So he phoned the police. Tell them what's up. Come on. Come on. Oh, no, it puts you in a bit of a predicament, doesn't it? Can't believe she's gone. To be honest, just terrible. Because I found another friend up, who she phones her more than what I do, and um, she couldn't get no answer. And um, another girl used to speak to her over the internet. She didn't. She didn't get no joy. She was quite sort of lonely really, you know, as I said, she did keep in touch 
through the computer, that's what she'd done on the internet and phone, because she found it very hard to get out and about. You know, she wasn't that old. I know she wasn't very well, but... What can you say? Not nice to think that someone's been there all that time. It's got to be better, isn't it? If someone finds you I'm a lot earlier. Well, my mum had died alone in her flat, and she'd been there for about seven or eight days. Well, the police came and broke in and found her on the kitchen floor. She wouldn't have known anything. She had her coat on ready to go out and said she must have had a massive heart attack. So... And you've been speaking to her recently? No. No, I hadn't spoken to her for years. I felt a bit horrible in saying uh, that obviously they know uh, that Christine's dead and whatever, because uh, it shouldn't really be up to me to say things like that, really. But I suppose uh, she had to know. But I've, I've never heard that before. Uh, normally we finish the job and normally we get out and that's it, we're gone. Matt gets called in when life takes a wrong turn, even if nobody's died. Social services, the police and mental health teams all have his number. Today it's a housing association that's booked to clear and clean for a first floor flat. We can't actually open that door because it's wedged tight with it. Looking at the seepage in these parcels, there's a good chance there's a good chance that that's human excrement. You would definitely say that his Dyson had packed up and the housekeeping has got on top. Well, pissheads or people who've been drinking don't tend to leave that much cider hanging around, do they? So what's it been refilled with? The, the guy's obviously urinating into these bowls. So he's drinking it, he's drinking them, and then he's urine, he's filling them back up again. He's obviously not drinking his own urine. Right, I would say as a fairly young guy, he's got converse style trainers, which would indicate a young person. More porn than me, which again would indicate a young person. But then you look and glance upon maybe the fireplace or the bookcase and you see the Spanish bowl and it relates to better times, you know? It's the trinkets based around the flat that indicate that this wasn't always like this. At one point, this was probably a thriving, happy home, you know? But obviously, something has happened and uh, caused this sort of carnage. <laughs> nice clean bathroom, though. Look at the cobwebs around the handle with the toilet. Yeah, the toilet works. So that toilet hasn't been used for a long time. So that makes me even more sure now that those parcels up there are human faeces. Look at the bottles. You see what I'm saying to you about bottles? Look at the amount of bottles of urine. Because that definitely ain't Pepsi. And look at the poles. That's definitely faeces. Definitely. What was going through his mind as he carefully wrapped each page, page by page, folded, folded neatly, and folded into the roughly the same size parcels. So I don't think about the person that did that. I tend to think with the logistics of getting rid of it. This is a first floor flat, so there's someone living underneath this. So really, we don't want to alarm them. 
Are you there? How are you getting on? Yeah, good as gold. It ain't too bad up here, to be honest. Oh, that's good. It's a bit untidy, but you know what young fellas are like, don't you? Yeah. He didn't, he wasn't what you call a really very, very talkative guy. He They're the best neighbours to have. No. You don't want neighbours keep talking Not to you really. all the time, do you? Knocking no, on your door, borrowing sugar, well, you don't want any of that. It was lovely to see him now and again. You yeah. Know? It was nice to see him, but apart from that, I didn't really speak to him now. But he never used to let the gas and the electric people in. He's not looked at after the fact yeah, yeah. at all. But he's, he was up and down. But what it was, a few, a few years ago, he lost his mum, to be quite honest with so you. So he lost himself. He's lost himself. I think it, it was his way of grieving for his mother. That's what I think. That's what I think it was. I think it's it, it, his way of grieving for mum. And, and he didn't know how to do it, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I mean when you lose somebody, I mean, grief it affects people in different ways. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, very, very odd. A body has been found in a flat on the south coast. Matt has sent Clint, one of his longest serving cleaners, to deal with the aftermath. Yeah, what we've got is an uh, undiscovered death. There's a flat above a shop, I think it's a laundrette. It's quite messy in there. It looks like that. I don't know how long she's been there or he has been there. <coughs> this might smell a bit when it comes up. There, look, see, there's more maggots there. Big and small maggots. <coughs> so obviously all this has got to go. And there's a possibility that it's gone through to the floorboards below. And obviously the ceiling underneath uh, in the laundrette shop. Fumigate underneath there. So because they, they're getting problems with the maggots coming through at the moment. Get your laundrette back and there's all maggots popping out your shirts. Yeah. <coughs> it seems like they've come out of the bedroom and down the stairs and out towards in the kitchen. The same majority of it, there's more here than there is in a bedroom. Usually, I mean, if that's their food, they'd stay around there. So, obviously, there's no body fluids around here. So, I don't know why they've all come into the kitchen. Or they think there's something in the fridge for them, I don't know. But then the handles are too high for them to get into, so. Found a photo there. I don't know if it's the gentleman that lived here or not. Shop owner downstairs uh, said that he came in and found him, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, last week. But, you know, whether the bloke was living here on his own, well, probably was, but, you know, we don't know any more about it, really. Yeah, it's probably over that side, the bedroom would be. Depending on how experienced they are, Cleaners working for Matt take home between 250 and 500 pounds a week. Yeah, but then it's not something I thought to myself, oh, I want to grow up, I want to go around clearing up undiscovered deaths. Just something you've got into. So I weren't too keen on it at first, must admit. But you, get, you do get used to it, you just got to get on with it. Like I say, if you do start thinking about things, that's when you get a bit, you know, it's like going in your head and you think, oh, that's a bit of someone's head or something, you know, you just. Then you just got to try and switch off and then think, oh, I need to get all that out. That's got to be washed, that's got to be moved about. You know, you just think of it that way now. It's not everyone's first choice of a job, OK? But if you've got three kids at home and you've got to feed them, then I tell you what, it's barren sod all. No, I don't, I don't think it's unusual. Maybe in your university society world, yeah. Our recruitment driver at Eaton was particularly poor this year, you know? Human faeces, dead bodies, drugs, needles, and life's unwanted wasn't for them. But as I say, as much as we were disappointed with our Eton recruitment drive, you know, we are hoping that Oxford will be better next year. Steve and Nick are still waiting to be called out on a body job. But the worst of London's mess is keeping them busy. 
the evidence points towards maybe a stubborn old lady that refuses to move out and there's a lot of dog hairs and you know she's obviously got a bit of incontinence. Incontinence, dirty needles and some blood provide their bread and butter work. Blood on the wall, that's obviously been, it's, it's sprayed and hit so it's obviously I mean, it must have come from an injection of some sort, whether they've sprayed it from the needle itself or it's sprayed out from the arm. But while cleaning a warehouse, Steve and Nick suddenly find themselves uncomfortably close to the body job they've been looking for. A guy came rushing in saying there's been an accident. He was in a real distress and he was asking, could people come out and help? And in the back, there was a guy that uh, had been crushed by about 10 tons of marble slabs. And we were trying to get the, move the slabs off of him. Um, but as you got, we, I jumped in the back of the container, I was quite, quite close to him. You could see he was, uh, see he was dead. We, we kind of clean up unusual circumstances. And there was one that actually unfolded and happened straight away in front of our eyes virtually. I think if we were called to actually do any cleaning after in the container, for example, I think that I'll be able to do it. Can you leave a card or someone? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how insensitive that would be or not. It's very difficult with this business because you don't know how... It is very... It could be very insensitive, very very bad timing, very, very... A morally bad thing to do. I don't like, I suppose, to think that you'd be profiteering from someone who's just, just kind of passed over. But at the same time, you actually would be able to offer a service to, to help. I think what we might do is to smear it. Yeah, that's pretty good colour, isn't it? It's very good colour. OK. Handprints. Handprints. Yeah, I suppose we want right hand that side. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, like that. yeah. Yes. Put handprints there. Put a couple there. Steve and Nick are confident that the body jobs are just around the corner. They've even taken on a full-time employee, and they're setting up a training session to prepare him for a worst-case scenario. People die in all different ways, and you can either have a hemorrhage in the bath, and there's just blood in the bath, and <coughs> pretty much nowhere else. So you can have someone that's been murdered in the bathroom, in which case, if they were cut, they'd have splashes up the wall. You can have someone that's been murdered in the bathroom, and then dragged out through the bathroom here, in which case, you'd have a trail of blood here. I think it's going to be any more and it's going to be over the top. Yeah, we will. Yeah, that looks pretty realistic to me. Cool. It looks like a horror film, yeah. horror, frankly. Oh, perfect. They're ready to bring in Mikey, the new Polish recruit. What do you think? Obviously, if there's any stage that you feel traumatised by what you see, you've got to let us know. Just get the bowl cut, Mike. Like, don't worry about rubbing it too much. Just, just give it a quick right and side, quick rinse down. And just soak it, just soak it with the, the towel. That's fine. We'll, we'll work with a congealed mess afterwards. There's thousands of deaths a year, and they all occur in different places. So, many are probably similar to this. This is actually what we might be facing tomorrow, possibly. Who knows? Depends on the phone call. It wasn't the real scene of a death, unfortunately, um, for us, but um, those, this kind of situation is what we're hoping to face in the future as we go forward, so. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Matt has been called to a flat high up in a tower block in South London where a body lay unnoticed for over two weeks. That's where I too be. Look out on the paper. The paper is soaked. It soaks it all up, cushion. Yeah. Here as well. Oh, so it's laid that way. Uh, when you say that? Did 
didn't have any trouble with the girls. Lots of money because he worked hard. It's a similar kind of pattern to George Best, but with my brother, he wasn't famous, so he ended up the way he ended up. I would say alcohol-related. Needless to say, there is quite a lot of evidence of body fluids. You can smell it's been some time, though, can't you? The smell's quite strong. One of the first things, only, obviously I didn't know, um, when he, he was still married then, uh, and I do know that sometimes he'd get up and he'd have a lager in the morning. You've got tissue with blood on it, it looks like the fellow was ill, and that's full of blood as well. So it would appear that he's being sick or coughing into a bowl. I would say he's had some health problem. I wouldn't like to think that he'd laid there, let's say, for a day of dying. I mean, that would have been just too awful, especially as I was in Alton Towers, having a good time, enjoying myself. Um, but, yeah, no, I wouldn't... I just want to... What I want to hear is that he's just killed over and died, because to think of him just laying there, dying, is just too heartbreaking, really. My first concern is to get it cleared up. I would take the three-piece, yeah. I would take the clothing, mm -hmm. I would take all the litter around here, yeah. and I would cut... Up to it? Yeah. And I would take a cut. I would probably do that whole strip. Just looking at the uh, calendar in the kitchen. It's dated for June this year. But, i us say, every fortnight, Jivo. You know, just waiting every fortnight for his gyro to come. It's just that's how it's dated on his uh, calendar. So he makes you wonder what sort of life he had, cos uh, he ain't got no... nothing else on his calendar date, so I'm gonna do this, do that. Um, my brother was an alcoholic for over 20 years, I would say, definitely. I did keep in touch with him, but also it was that thing of, I don't really want to call him in case something's happened again. I'm glad he's not doing that anymore. And it's, it's, I don't want him to be dead. I want him to be alive and sober, but I'm glad he's not just existing and living like that now. The last time I saw my parents was probably six to eight weeks ago and they live less than a mile from me. But I don't think I should be the focus. Clint, <laughs> when was the last time you saw your mum? Um, I think it was July. July, now that's a bad son, isn't it? You would go with that, July. Oh, she's July. a busy woman. No, she's not a busy woman. <laughs> He's got a birthday to go to, right? Yeah, and she's going to be there. Morning, He's going to bump into her and say, oh, are you a friend of the family? <laughs> I'm your mother, Clint. <laughs> <laughs> We do a reasonable amount of suicides, I would say a reasonable amount of suicides. And uh, they can always be, you can paint quite a few pictures with suicides because you can actually see obviously where they killed themselves and how they lived. It's actually my best body jobs. You do think why have they done it, you know, what has pushed them that way. But, you know, we treat it, it's, all, it's, it's a body job at the end of the day, so. We're not like philosophers or anything, are we? Or yeah, private detectives who just, you know, we've got to clear it up and that's it. We've done suicides where people have cut their wrists, then changed their mind. They got out the bath, they've panicked, run round the flat, and then died at the door trying to get out the front door to race for help. So you, you can imagine that when you go in there, it is it's incredible because you can actually see the demise or the end of that person's life. Dink and Clint have been called to a suicide in East London. The body wasn't found straight away. They've been asked to clean up the body fluids and remove all personal belongings. No, they say that's what it looks like. It's a sort of 30s, 40s bloke, I should think. Say there's quite a few posters about that. But I uh, haven't seen any photos or anything like that to give away what it looks like. But uh, yeah, it's not a cleanest, but it's been a lot worse. So it looks like he might be dealing with a fellow who was uh, at least trying in life, you now making an effort. So. Do 
shame that his life turned out like it did. They should have stayed away for so long and then didn't turn to nobody in his family when he did need somebody at the end. We'll try and say something nice about him, just one thing nice. I hate him. I hated him for doing it. So you've got no sympathy? No. No. I am. Leslie's ex-wife organised and paid for his funeral, even though they'd been apart for 12 years. Today is the first time that she and her daughters have visited his unmarked grave. Her son Nathan has refused to come. How are you? I don't know. How would you feel if your life were like that and you had nobody at all and you couldn't let nobody in? I don't know, it works. I don't mean that. But don't you think it'd be a horrible, sad <clears throat> existence? It's not alive. Yeah, I know, but... What's that got to do with Because that, that were your dad's life. That's how he lived last, you know, 10, 12 years of his life. It don't make me forgive him. Forgive him. What is it that you don't forgive him for, though? Hitting you. Yeah, but can't you put that to one side and that happened in man and your dad's relationship, but that didn't happen in yours and your dad's relationship? I left him because it had been a really bad, strained, violent relationship. Just not a, not a very nice husband. Weren't his fault. A lot of it were down to him taking his drugs and a lot of it were down to his mental health problems, rather than it just being he were a nasty person. Well, we didn't know for definite, we'd just hear he'd gone to London. Yeah, like I say, things go wrong, I suppose, in, like, uh, divorced or, you know, lose their job. Sends a bit, a bit off the rail sometimes, I suppose, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, back. And they just, like I say, just give up in the end and just think, oh, what's the point of it? One of the worst feelings in life, really. That's, that's the ultimate, to be pushed. You know, there's, there's no going any further over the edge of a cliff than suicide, that's literally. Woohoo! There you are. <laughs> Come on, Dean, keep it going. Look like you're busy. Come on. He hung himself in flat, inside flat, where he'd basically shut himself away. Every photo we'd got of kids in flat were on that wall straight in front of him. So it just seemed strange he could do it. Literally looking at his kids and not them not be enough to stop him doing what he was doing. Last time I ever spoke to him, um, when I went up to see him at London and um, just before I was going uh, he says to me, I love you and I want to love you and I want to get to know you. What else did he say to you? He says he was going to keep in touch. And how do you feel about that he didn't? Mm -hmm. I'm not worried. I hope to talk about it. I'm not talk about it. It's lovely if you talk about it, because you wait and talk about it to nobody else. Your chance to get it all off your chest. Isn't it? Do you want two minutes to calm down? Yeah. Yeah, uh, go wash your face and... It is hard for them because they don't know whether to love him or to hate him. Yeah, I'll pass it to me, Dad. So, yeah, that's the only one remaining. It's not even really a good one. You should only see part of his face on it. On Nathan's birthday. First birthday. Well, 15 years ago. That's what we look like. It is hard for them because they've got to sort it out in their own heads and deal with it and move on from it. That's his life in that bag and that truck. We, we just removed the last off of a fella. That is his whole life. 
That's his last season remains in that bag. And that's his entire life on the back of this truck. It's took a day to remove his life, so. Hang on, mate. Come on, get down now. No, Who's took my mate's bike? Huh? Who's nicked the bike? I don't know. Get down, mate, come on. Leave it there, leave it there, come on. Get down, mate, get out. Who's took my bike away? Someone's nicked my mate's bike. I was like, I'd like to come to ask fucking you joke, this is. Trying to put a fucking job we are here. Yeah? People rummaging on the trucks. No one's allowed up there, insurance purposes. If he falls over, breaks his back up there, mate, we get sued for it. I just come and ask the question. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, not, I'm, I'm talking to him, mate. Yeah, I'm talking to Mikey over. You're not going to go up there, listen. You're not going to go up there, all right? End off. I... Oh, fucking hell. You're fucked off now, this fucking job. Next person gets up there, fucking gold help them. People don't realise what we have to do in a fucking day's work. Fucking crap. I'll catch you up there, go help you, mate. No, I'll see you up there, go fucking help you. I don't give a fuck, fuck off. Fuck off. Come on! Couldn't be nice for him. I wouldn't want it. There's no way I'd have that job. Not just for the smell and the mess, it's just, you're just going and claiming other people's mess up that they've left behind. I wouldn't want to, would you? No, can't do it. No. They deserve all the money they get. They must be either very caring or must be borderline insane. <laughs>